It has been way too long since we have talked about UFOs and aliens on this channel. So guess what we're doing today? That's right. So we have already talked about there being three UFO capitals in Wisconsin, right? And we already we already been to Elmwood. We've we've seen we've seen Belleville already. We even brushed on Wisconsin's version of Roswell. But there's one place, one last piece to the little trifecta that we haven't Put together yet and that is dundee wisconsin okay now dundee is particularly special you see dundee actually has a mountain which is hot like this is haunted by these ufo sightings it's not exactly really a mountain but it's 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 technically a hill but still regardless so today let's get into why dundee wisconsin believes that they should be ufo capital of the state shall we let us begin. So Dundee, Wisconsin is just another small unincorporated city sitting off the Kettle Moraine State Forest. But on this channel, we are pretty familiar with this mysterious bit of forestry, are we not? From sightings of Bigfoot, werewolves, right? Ghosts. We can go ahead and add UFOs to the list. Stories of aliens in the area go all the way back to the 1940s. And I mean, they actually go back way before then. But what made it modernly popular? popular was a story that brings us all the way back to the 1940s when bizarre crop circles appeared in an oat field and ever since then it seems this place has just become an epicenter for sightings. Residents have embraced their encounters and even invite tours far and wide to come and visit with their yearly festivities in celebration of these ET visits. Did I mention uh, Dundee as a mountain, right? Yeah, I mentioned that. Okay, yeah, I said it was more of a hill, but this chunk of elevated land is at about 1,230 feet or 375 meters high, and it sits close to a uh, long lake, to which is also home to some peculiar stories, if I do say so myself, stories of lights glowing above as well below the water surface. People from all around come and gather at this sacred site for what the locals call UFO Days, hosted by Bill Benson, and folks keep their eyes locked to the sky for a chance to experience something otherworldly. And Bill Benson is a notable UFO enthusiast and respected lifelong citizen of Dundee. He is the owner and operator of the Hideaway Tavern. Mr. Benson has had more than his fair share of run-ins with these space beings and crafts. On multiple occasions, Bill, as well as many Dundee and surrounding residents, witnessed bizarre lights dancing around the uh, Dundee Mountain, around the Long Lake, and to many individuals, too many individuals, are seeing something that no one can logically explain. One story describes numerous people seeing lights in the sky form into a Y shape, moving in formation and then abruptly dispersing and vanishing. Another tells how residents saw military jets chase an exceptionally fast moving orb that also simply vanished. But the stories, they don't stop there, nor did they start there. Something is certainly going on in Dundee. Too many credible witnesses and too many strange occurrences. In fact, even the indigenous Native Americans were well aware of the oddities happening here that they dubbed Dundee Mountain Spirit Hill. Unfortunately, this past December, Dundee lost one of its biggest UFO enthusiasts, Bill Benson, and the Hideaway Tavern is temporarily closed. But Bill's legacy, I'm sure, will live on for years to come, and nobody in Dundee is going to be forgetting him anytime soon. So thank you guys so much for joining me today and talking about Dundee, Wisconsin. It was so good to talk about extraterrestrials again. And even though I know I didn't get into a really long one, this was still, this was fun. And I also wanted to share something strange with you guys that happened to me when I attempted to visit Dundee. So Dundee is about an hour's drive east of where I live. 
and I decided to venture on out to Dundee. Now you guys know that I've, I've only have ever had a handful of paranormal experiences, but I've never had a UFO experience, at least until perhaps a few weeks ago. So <clears throat> as we ventured on out to the Dundee area, we come ac we, we're coming up upon um, Dundee Mountain, right? And it's it's stunning. It's it's around the evening time. The sun is setting. The sky is getting dark, and it's it's gorgeous out. It's a very clear night as well. And as we get up to the mountain to start filming a bit, and just kind of like we we had filmed all the way up, you know, recorded while we were talking, me and Laura, and we were just enjoying ourselves. And all of a sudden, when we get to the mountain, there's an older couple walking around the area and we chit chat a little bit and we tell them briefly about what we're doing and that we were just there to film a little bit for a channel and that we wanted to talk about UFOs and the strangest thing happened out of the corner of my eye I see something very very bright in the sky and I mean like it, it's enough to get my attention and at first I'm just thinking like a flash of a headlight anything you know anything logical and reasonable and as we all turn up, we all see the same flash. And it was almost like, I don't know how to explain it. It was just so quick, right? And I'm filming as well this whole time. And and the older couple there just kind of laugh and they go, ha, it's just Dundee for you. It happens all the time. They were completely unfazed by this. Me and Laura, however, were absolutely shocked. We were excited, ecstatic even. We just caught our first potential UFO maybe, right? It just was not to be... This night, I happened to be the only one filming on the camera, and Laura's, she's kind of just the photographer. She doesn't usually do any filming, okay? I mean, it, it, typically. She, she's, she's starting to branch out now, and you guys should definitely go give her a follow. But it just happened to be the night that I was just filming. It was just me filming, okay? <laughs> and I get back and I pop in my SD card and I'm so excited to upload everything. And I noticed too in my bag, my camera had turned on at some point on our drive back. I mean, we loaded everything up, I threw everything in my bag and I get home and I'm popping my little SD card into my computer and the whole damn thing is blank. Nothing, not even my old videos, there is nothing. It has been completely wiped clean. And I thought that was just such a shit coincidence was it i was just not meant to have that footage what happened right but yeah that was my little bit of a crazy experience with dundee for myself but i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you live around the area definitely go give it a visit it's just such a fun place to be good people everybody's very welcoming there too um unfortunately i didn't get to visit the hideaway tavern like i wanted to we lost Bill, as I stated in my narration, unfortunately, this past December, and I'm sending his family all my love and all the community of Dundee. I hope they all heal. And as I said before, I don't think Bill's legacy is going to die anytime soon. He was such um, he was such a pinnacle in the community, you know. But yeah, that's the story of Dundee, you guys. Um, yep, you get out there, get out there to the festival, go see that place, man. It's just it's sensational, and yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The UFO capitals of Wisconsin, and we finished it, but there is still so much more when it comes to this UFO stuff. You guys, we've got current sightings going on. Lake Michigan is just filled to the brim. I have got people DMing me stories, people telling me personal stories. It's just, it's incredible. So this is going to be one wild summer. I've got so many more videos coming too. Uh, me and Lloyd, we've, we've, done, we've hit up shipwrecks. We have, we, we have, we've been doing some urban exploration we've been investigating abandoned buildings you guys this is going to be a summer to remember so sit tight stay tuned and i will see you all very very soon